Good day, George. Uh, thanks for talking to Passion Picks today. Oh, it's great to be here. How are you? I'm doing great, thank you. Now, there's an incredible wave of global popularity for the music of Frankie Valli in the Four Seasons, from the theatre production of Jersey Boys to your own stage production of Oh, What a Night, and now Clint Eastwood's new motion picture. What do you think drives that? And can you tell us a little about your own personal journey of discovering Frankie Valli and his music? Yes, it, it's really a fun story for me because and I've told this story before, but I, I don't I love telling it. I'm the youngest boy of seven brothers and sisters, and this music was playing in my house constantly. My sister Cynthia was a very big fan of Frankie Valli's, and I would hear the music over and over again. From my very, very earliest memories, I can remember these songs playing in our house. And it's kind of funny. There was a, a five-year-old girl who moved down the street. I was five years old myself, and her name was Sherry. And I would sit on her porch steps, and I would sing Sherry Baby to her. You know, what's it come out tonight? I would sit out there, and I would sing the song. And we ended up being very good friends. We ended up dating for many years. So... Yeah, so the music of Frankie Valli really, <laughs> it inspired me from a very young age. And every night when I stand on stage and sing Sherry, I, I put right back there on her porch again. I, can, I just picture it in my mind. Every time I sing the song, I can't help but think of Sherry. That's beautiful. You started in the business at 15 and worked with some of the all-time greats. Could you share any of your standout experiences? Well... I've had some great experiences with some amazing artists. I had a chance to write and direct a show for Smokey Robinson and then also appear on his television series. And Smokey Robinson was just the nicest man on earth. So, so warm, so giving. And it was a pleasure to work with him. And I got a chance to work with many of the great Motown legends. I thought that Diana Ross was a terrific lady, really talented and really warm. Stevie Wonder, The Temptations, Martha Reeves. I, I'm so blessed that I got a chance to work with people that I idolized from the time that I was very, very young. I see that you, uh, you're you a Motown historian. I'm fascinated by that idea. I've been a big Motown fan, and I, because I got to work with so many of the greats, and even now, I am producing a, a, for Motown. Motown's owned by Universal now in the United States, and I produced some of the classic Motown CDs along with um, my, my co-producer Andy Scarro. We do, we'll take a classic album like we'll take a, a classic Diana Ross and the Supremes album and we will reissue it on CD and make it what we call an expanded edition where we get songs that are previously unreleased or maybe alternate takes and we do a deluxe edition of the CD. And so I, I still am involved in the Motown music very, very much. And it, it's it's an interesting connection because Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons and the Motown sound I think are very similar. Barry Gordy, president of Motown, has said that he was inspired by the early works of the Four Seasons. There was a certain sound that he loved. And then as the years went on, I think the Four Seasons also paid tribute to the Motown sound as well. So at a time when the Beatles hit America and were dominating the music charts, it really is the Supremes the other Motown acts and Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons that really endured and they continued to be popular when a lot of other groups just kind of faded off the charts because the British invasion just took over. From all those greats that you worked with, um, what was the best advice you were given when you came to kind of put this project together, um, of the, your stage production of Oh What A Night? The best advice was from our director, Michael Chapman, and he tells everybody, and this is absolutely true, if you can communicate the lyrics of these songs, it doesn't matter how simple you think these lyrics are. If you can tell a story and really convey to the audience what you're saying, and you forget about your voice, and you forget about trying to do all kinds of vocal gymnastics, the audience will get what you're trying to communicate. And there, there's a, a, an all-around feel-good feeling about our show that comes across. There's such a sense of fun. The four of us have a great time on stage every night. We genuinely like each other very much off stage as well. And that, that shows. The audience will say afterwards, this show was so much fun. You guys are really having a great time with each other. You must, you must really care about each other. And I love hearing that because 
I don't think you can really fake that. And the music speaks for itself. The music is so good. I mean, how can you, songs like Sherry and Big Girls Don't Cry, Walk Like a Man, uh, Ragdoll, Grease, we, we, you know, they span decades. We start with the early 60s. We go down into the 70s and even into the 80s. There was, there was just, just decades of hits for us to perform. The best advice is anytime you're on stage, be honest. Be absolutely honest. And if you are, the audience will get it. Could you tell us a little about the team you've brought together for your forthcoming Australian tour? Well, three of the guys, actually four of the guys have been on tour with us in Australia before. We always bring a fifth season along. We bring one more just in case, you know, when you're touring a lot and working a lot, if something were to happen, we have to have another guy to be able to jump right in there and fill in. And we have the original members, myself and Rick Morgan and Paul Holmquist are coming. Joe Conti came with us the first time we came to Australia, and he's he is ready to jump in and do any one of the parts if one of the guys were to get sick. And uh, a gentleman, Nick Petrus, is coming, and Nick is just an all-around amazing talent. He's a great singer, great dancer, great-looking guy, and he's he's just uh, he's an audience favorite over here in America. And I know that the people in Australia are going to embrace him as well. Obviously, George, your last Australian tour was very well received. Yes. What were the highlights for you? Well, it's really difficult to pinpoint one because when we first came to Australia, the first tour, people said, now, you know, people are reserved. They're not going to be like they are in the United States. Well, we didn't find that to be true. We found them to be amazing. The people were enthusiastic, and they they were they were so great to us. And then when we came back the second time, it was it was even better. We were like old friends coming back again. The The walls were down. There was a comfort level of performing for these great people. And this third time, we're, we're just, we're giddy about it. Coming, coming back a third time again, we just, we can't wait to hit the stage. Australia has been one of our favorite places, one of our absolute favorite places to perform. And the last time you were in Australia, you toured the eastern mainland states, but this time you've added South Australia and Western Australia? Yeah, I can't wait to do that. That will be something a little bit different for us. And it will it'll give us a chance to perform for some audiences that haven't had a chance to see our show. And we haven't had a chance to meet them yet either. So it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to add a new twist to our tour, which I'm very excited about. What places in Australia are you particularly looking forward to revisiting? I love the big cities. I love when we go there. But when we go to some of the smaller venues, that's always a treat for us because we often have people come to us and say, you know, we usually have to go to Sydney or Melbourne to, to see shows like this. We play some of the most quaint, smaller towns that have these beautiful theaters in them. So where, wherever we go, we, we've been enchanted by just about every place. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you why in particular, because they've all been very charming and they've all treated us well. The only time I wasn't treated well was when I was attacked by a magpie. That was my that was my one Australian experience that I I had not even never even thought of something like that happening. And the the guys teased me about that for a long time about the magpie swooping down and coming to me. So I'm I'm really hoping I don't encounter that again this time. You seem to be one of the hardest working performers I've ever come across. I never for a moment am not grateful for it. I never complain about it, no matter how busy. I get, no matter how often I'm touring, no matter where I'm going, I always have to remember this is just a blessing. And if this all went away tomorrow, I would miss it so much. It's all about loving what you do. It, it's, I can't say it's not work because it's definitely work, but we love it so much. Okay? It's, it's also play. Our work is our play. Now, you wrote this show in 2008, and it's been phenomenally successful. What keeps you personally inspired and moving forward with it? I think it's the audience. All four of us have done many, many shows and lots of theatrical shows. Grease, West Side Story, South Pacific, uh, Buddy Holly Story. Every night when we come off stage, we say, you know, I never get tired of doing this show. We feel the same way the audience does about the four seasons. You just don't get tired of doing it. That's what keeps me going. The enthusiasm for the crowd. When people come up to you afterwards and say that it meant something to them or or this, this inspired me. We have people who have come back and seen this show 50, 60 times. People who have traveled all over the United States to see us again. And you just think, wow, they really, they, they're really enjoying this. They're really getting something from this. That's very rewarding. That's a fantastic energy. 
coming into a show that knowing that people come back again and again and are attracted to the music and you you make it alive every single night. We have people who don't even speak English that will come up to us after the show and they will be expressing in their language how much they enjoyed the show. That's when you got to say, wow, this really does cross over all barriers. <laughs> this, this music really is. There is something definitely magical about it. So do you leave them dancing in the streets afterwards? Yes, we are. That's, uh, you, you, just, you just quoted a Martha and the Vandellas song. Yeah, I think that people were, people were dancing out in the streets as they're going back to their cars. Yeah, they, it's definitely an all-around feel-good show. Brilliant. It's been a pleasure talking to you today, George. Much appreciated and wish you all the best on your travels over here for your forthcoming tour. We look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you very much. Sure, please. Try I, we got me down to side, but tell it.